I done, I, I done adapted to it. I got to get them time to adapt to it. Because they're going to have to get used to it because it's here to stay. Gucci Mane Yeah, I heard that same rumor. It's funny to me. I guess that, you know, people ain't used to me being healthy and taking care of myself and being happy. So it's, I can understand why they, why they shock. You know what I'm saying? So it's funny. I embrace it. It just let me know a clone is like perfection. So if I look like a machine or a robot, then everything I'm doing something well. today involving a Georgia rapper arrested for an alleged assault. Gucci Man is in the Fulton County Jail this afternoon after a judge denied bond for him today. Channel 2's Wendy Corona is here live with how he ended up in jail this time and why he's now staying there. Wendy? Well, Gucci Man, real name, Roderick Davis, was denied bond on two felony aggravated assault charges, not just because of what he allegedly did, but because of his past. <laughs> Roderick Davis stood handcuffed in court this morning. His attorney drew Finling by his side. After the hearing, after Bond was denied and Davis stayed in custody of the Fulton County Jail, Finling spoke for his client. Mr. Davis has a, a history. You know, we're not going to skirt that issue. And that, that history uh, made it difficult for him to get Bond today. Um, but that battle's not over yet. Um, we will we will continue to seek Bond. And Mr. Davis, you have two felony charges of felony aggravated assault stemming from a March 16th incident at Harlem Nights in downtown Atlanta. A soldier from Kentucky celebrating his birthday claims he asked Davis for a picture in the VIP area when he says the rapper smashed a champagne bottle over his head. The victim was taken to Grady and received 10 stitches. Davis's attorney is concerned that since the alleged incident, the state's investigation has not turned up witnesses. Police said we are unable to identify any additional witnesses. We have now talked to a half a dozen witnesses who all say, from their perspective, sure, there was a melee that broke out, um, but nowhere in that melee did they say Ray, see Raydrick Davis hit anybody with a bottle. Another man who claims Davis punched him two days later in Philadelphia spoke to Channel 2 Action News over the phone. You just don't go around hitting your fans. Davis's next court date is set for April 10th at 9 a.m., and his attorney says he will continue to seek bond for Davis. So I want to know what's going on in the scene. So when I when I got back, I wasn't just lost, and that helped me out a lot. That's why I seen what a lot of people were doing, what the style was, a lot of things I had to touch on. So my rocks were current. So when I got out, I was I was I was back current with the bases. I was on the current time. I was right down, or uh, not even faster than most rappers. Snap music had emerged real quick. As soon as I got caught, I got right back out. And I dropped my shame. My first day out of jail. So. I feel like I was, I was doing it. What's happening? What's happening? How's everything? Oh, everything's pretty good. Everything all right? Damn good. You smiling now. That's that's a good thing. It means everything oh, all right. Man, I'm always smiling. I ain't got nothing to pry about. You look focused too, my brother, man. I'm focused. We I'm had focused. it back. You know, I do everything. I, I, know, Gucci, I apologize. Man. I just said Gucci probably wasn't going to show up. Definitely not on time. You got to have some halo. <laughs> Jeezy situation that just broke. Mm -hmm. And I started questioning Gucci about it, and he talked to me just like that. He said, I don't feel like talking about right now. <laughs> and I looked him in his eyes and I said, you know what? That's a person you shouldn't uh, keep pressuring about questions. Because <laughs> <laughs> it could flip on you. <laughs> but you do have a mixtape coming out next week, right? Trap God. Trap God 1017. Right, and Young Scooter. That's so, first, you did a mixtape with Future first, right? Yeah. And that was kind of. Um, you were early on that, because I didn't know that much about Future. At first, Charlemagne, what's your opinion on Future? Why don't you tell me? I, I, don't, I don't think Future's a great lyricist, but I think he makes great records. Yeah, me too. I agree with you. Yeah, 
been joined by Secretary of Health and Human Services Donna Shalala and Dr. Harold Varmus, Director of the National Institutes of Health, and Dr. Harold Shapiro, Chair of the National Bioethics Advisory Commission, uh, whom I will introduce in just a moment, and he will make remarks and present the President. I want to uh, also acknowledge uh, Dr. Jack Gibbons, the, the President's Advisor on Science and Technology, and also uh, in the audience, uh, Congressman George Brown of California, Congresswoman Connie Morella of Maryland, and the many uh, distinguished uh, guests who are present. There may be some I should single out and just don't know to mention. But to all of you, good morning and welcome to the White House. We're here, of course, because we all realize we must strive to find the sometimes delicate but always crucial balance between our unending search for knowledge and doing what is safe and morally right. Ever since scientists in Scotland successfully cloned a sheep, an adult sheep, in February, the President and those of us who work with him, along with the rest of the nation, have grappled with the meaning and significance of the discovery, and the meaning and significance, of course, of the many scientific, safety, ethical, and religious implications presented by the question of prospective, the prospective possibility of cloning of human beings. No one, however, has deliberated more on this issue than the men and women who are responsible for the report being delivered today to President Clinton, the members of the National Bioethics Advisory Commission. Over the last three months, they worked on an extremely complex issue at an extremely fast pace. They did a truly careful, insightful, and remarkable job. They are here today, uh, almost all of them, and they met with the President in the Oval Office a few moments ago, and I would like to ask all of the members of the Commission to stand and be recognized so that we might thank you as a group. In the eerie blue light of his secret lab, one of the world's most controversial scientists shows off his creation, cloned human embryos that are genetic carbon copies of their father. Oh, my babies are doing well. They look beautiful. Filmed for a TV documentary, Dr. Paniotis Zavos implants 11 of the embryos in four women, one of them British, in the hope of producing the first cloned human being. The procedure is a criminal offence in the UK. UK, but not in this undisclosed Middle Eastern country. I think we have three very good embryos that could be in utero today, and that if implantation is successful as well, and the pregnancy is maintained, as we say in the US, we have a home run. Dr. Zavos also reveals he's produced cloned embryos from three dead people including Katie, who died in a car crash. He injected her DNA into a cow egg, though he hasn't implanted the animal-human hybrid. British scientists have condemned his work as reckless. Cloning of animals, such as Dolly, has shown the technique carries risks of severe congenital abnormalities. I find it, A, incredible, and B, disgusting, because he's sowing false hope to begin with so the individuals who are involved in this experiment and that's what it is an experiment may well not realize that the outcome is almost certainly going to be negative um, and to put couples through that in my opinion is unethical dr zavos adapted a standard cloning technique for his human patients he first took an egg from the mother and stripped out the nucleus containing 99.9 .9 of her dna he then took a skin cell from the father and extracted the genetic material. That was injected into the empty egg and given a jolt of electricity to form a cloned embryo. Within a matter of days, the embryo would have grown into a ball of 32 cells, which Dr. Zavos implanted into the mother's womb. So far, none of the attempts has led to a viable pregnancy, but this infertile Canadian doctor, who wants to remain anonymous, says the technique is his only hope of having a child. Pretty much decided that uh, probably I would be the first one to be cloned, but then, you know, if it worked, then we might go on to have another child. Despite almost universal condemnation, Dr. Zavos has vowed to continue his work. He says more than 100 patients have contacted him in the hope of having a cloned baby. Thomas Moore, Sky News. I think it may be possible 
to clone humans. Our administration believes that there are loopholes that could allow the cloning of human beings if such if the technology were developed. Therefore, today I am issuing a directive that bans the use of any federal funds for any cloning of human beings. Effective immediately, no federal agency may support, fund, or undertake such activity. Of course, a great deal of research and activity in this area is supported by private funds. That is why I am urging the entire scientific and medical community, every foundation, every university, every industry that supports work in this area, to heed the federal government's example. I'm asking for a voluntary moratorium on the cloning of human beings until our Bioethics Advisory Commission and our entire nation have had a real chance to understand and debate the profound ethical implications of the latest advances. toxic in my life, just fall away and, and just set up a boundary for when I got out. But at the same time, it was it was a medical security prison, and, you know, people were dying every week, you know what I'm saying? It was a lot of death, a lot of violence. And, you know, people were dying every week, you know what I'm saying? It was a lot of death, a lot of violence. time I feel like I'm a hell of a man and you know besides being a celebrity you know I'm just gonna always handle myself like a man and it don't take people long to see that and that's how people gonna have to approach me period whether I'm in jail whether I deal with the police whether I deal with anybody you know my probation officer I'm gonna always be a man so I never been fun to just let people take advantage of me or handle me in any kind of way so that'll never happen I think I've been sophisticated. I've been, you know what I'm saying? I've been super smart. When I was on drugs so bad, you know, I talked different. You know, when I was smoking weed, I was having a pound of weed every other day. You know, I was congested. When I was drinking lean like crazy every day, I was out of my mind. 
It ain't even a sophisticated, it's just a, a sober, a more conscious Gucci. And then people probably ain't used to it. I'm not, you know, it took a minute for me to get used to it. A more conscious Gucci. And then people probably ain't used to it. I'm not, you know, it took a minute for me to get used to it. But I'm not, you know, it took a minute for me to get used to it. But I'm not, you know, it took a minute for me to get used to it. Over three years, it's like I, I don't, I, I don't adapt to it. I gotta get them time to adapt to it, cause they're gonna have to get used to it, cause it's here to stay. Gucci Mane will come. Yeah, I heard that same rumor. It's funny to me. I guess that you know people ain't used to me being healthy and taking care of myself and being happy. So it's, I can understand why they, why they shock. You know what I'm saying? So it's funny. I embrace it. It just let me know a clone is like perfection. So if I look like a machine or a robot, then over then I'm doing something well. You know, a clone is like perfection. So if I look like a machine or a robot, then over then I'm doing something well. So I said, Sniper, 
Simplement, euh, un jour, j'ai entendu parler de, de, de cette nouvelle technique de clonage. Et puis, euh, j'ai compris qu'ils avaient besoin de mères porteuses. J'ai simplement posé volontairement ma candidature. Je vais aider 
la science à mettre en place. Je vais aider les enfants pour les neuf mois. Je vais aider les enfants pour les neuf mois. Je vais aider les enfants pour les neuf mois. Je vais aider les enfants pour les neuf mois. Je vais aider les enfants pour les neuf mois. Je vais aider les enfants pour les neuf mois. Je vais aider les enfants pour les neuf mois. Je vais aider les enfants pour les neuf mois. About a two and a half hour drive straight into the rural heartland lies a bizarre theme park named UFO Land. There, in what claims to be the largest straw bale construction in the world, lies the headquarters of the Raelian religion. Closed to tourists for winter and entries by appointment only. The deserted corridors are illuminated by stained glass windows that give an insight into the thinking of this unusual cult. It was founded in France in the early 1970s and now claims 55,000 members worldwide. Expelled from his native France, former racing car driver and journalist Raël now has his base in Canada. It's his ambition to build the structure shown in this model near Jerusalem. Its purpose? welcome the alien race which inspired his interest in human cloning. The flying saucer is apparently a full-scale replica of the one he originally witnessed in a volcano in France. Rael first inspired Dr. Boisselier, a disciple, to develop research into human cloning. He founded CloneAid and believes cloning is the way to an eternal life where we'll eventually transfer our memories and personalities into adult replicas. He founded CloneAid and believes cloning is the way to an eternal life where we'll eventually transfer our memories and personalities into adult replicas. Um, right. Absolutely. You know, if you go to Disney World, for instance, down there in the Haunted Mansion, you see the hologram, right? Oh, you, you know how to make a hologram. Well, our scientists have learned how to make people. They call them synthetics. Are you familiar with those? Um, well, actually, we just interviewed John Laird. He was talking about being in an audience in which they were given a lecture by a guy that they thought was real and found out later was he was a hologram. Well, it's a synthetic. A synthetics, when you touch their skin, it feels like uh, plastic almost. That's the latest technique. The old, the old techniques, uh, if you guys were in a video, uh, the boys from Brazil, rent it because in it it gives you the exact way how our government's been making people really yeah well, come and the on. soviets have a different method called I mean, making people meaning temporary people no walking talking ones meaning through genetics you're not talking about that well, let me tell you let me yeah, the movie shows it but i'll share it with you right now all right all i need to do is take two cells off of your body yours uh-huh we give them a small electrical charge. I'm just connecting it and don't all act like a fertilized egg. If I got a fertilized egg, all I need is a receiver in order to make it. So they were hypnotizing women, you know, say they were in, being invaded by aliens. And the fetus starts growing, right? Needs food. Well, they can use cows and sheep, too. Again, a food source. That's all we need. After about 14 weeks, all of a sudden, that fetus is gone. Because they've learned to take, that's when the fetus starts developing its own blood supply. Then they've used the pituitary hormone extract that they have, which accelerates the being that grows. Then they've used the pituitary hormone extract that they have, which accelerates the being that grows. Which accelerates the being that grows. And the original technology was given to our government by the Greys. Now, the reason was that our scientists were all excited because we could have spare parts. If you need a heart or a liver or anything, you won't have any rejection. It's your own DNA, right? Okay, because theoretically, if we have overpopulation, we don't need more people, right? That's, but the so-called elite are selecting on who they want to have around anyway. So if we want to keep people going as long as we can. I, I talked to the doctor that was working on um, regeneration of Castro, uh, for instance. Right. On the DNA sequencing. And, that, and they're just learning about this.
was the first on the earth to say cloning, human cloning is coming very soon. That was 28 years ago, uh, after the encounter with this very advanced civilization from space, the Elohim, which uh, whose name in the, is in the Bible, and it's, they are the creators of life on earth. They came on the earth, a very advanced civilization, a long time ago, they came on the earth, built the big laboratories, and inside these laboratories, using DNA and genetic uh, engineering, they did create all life on Earth. An apartment in the famous Habitat 67 building in Montreal is the home of one of the world's leading theorists on the ethics of human cloning. Margaret Somerville is a professor at the McGill Center for Medicine, Ethics and Law. She remains skeptical. I actually believe most strongly it's not in our interest because of what I would call a secular, sacred attitude to the transmission of human life, that human life is not just a product, that there is something... Uh, I, I, there's no avoiding the word mystical. We need a new secular language to replace our old religious language. But there is something extraordinary um, about the handing on of life. The fact that... Unless you're cloned, there never has ever in the world, or unless you've got an identical twin, but let's leave that out of it, there's never been anybody genetically identical to you, and there never will be in the future unless somebody clones you. And so part of our sense that we've always had that there's something unique and special and wonderful and mysterious about the fact that you you are here, you do have this life, it's a limited time, and that's it. I mean, we risk losing all of those senses. Well, I, my understanding is that a lot of presidents have already been replaced. That's right. Yeah, like I don't think... They're I walking think, around, they're, they look old, but they basically... Uh, some well, of the but, people are just, I'll, I'll, I'll second, just give third you something copies. To, I'll give you something to ponder. Get some old videos of George Bush. It's when he first came into office. Look at the person and listen to him speak. Look at his actions and listen to his everything that's there. Now, it's a lot easier to put somebody out in front to act as a, you know, even Bush did. He had somebody else that was up there acting like he is and look like it. Even Hitler had a, you know, he had his stand. In fact, his stand-in was the one that they found in the, in the ground over in Germany. I mean, Hitler and Eva and the dog and 14 other people got aboard a plane and flew down to Barcelona, Spain. You were aware of that. And then ended up in Antarctica or in Swabenland and then died a few years ago in Brazil. That's what we heard. Oh, I, got a, I have all the documents from our own government. Oh, you do? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we have a contact, one of our Stalin contacts. even, uh, Stalin asked for the, you know, they tried to burn the body, and he got the body back, and he said, wait a minute, different ears, and, and the um, testicles were different and everything else, so they knew it wasn't Hitler. But is it a clone or not? Oh, now you know we're going about cloning. Cloning techniques, uh, since 38, we've been, 1938, they've been making clone people. There's eight countries making clones. I have a doctor okay, friend that all doesn't treat you, the clones. Where do you get your information? I get it from some of the people that are willing to come forth, and they talk to me because they hope I'll put the information out because they, they always got two people following them and they may be killed. If I start talking about cloning too much, the people that get involved into that uh, you disappear on it, so I don't go into too many more details. But there are informa- there is information that's available. And it's more and more of that's coming on the line. I just told you, go rent the uh, the movie. Okay, boys from Brazil. Yeah, and you'll see the whole technique on what they... They show it to you in different places, so you you can imagine what it's going on. Okay, so... Now, now, let's go to the next step, because this is the most important part. All right. If your physical reality that you have, based on this physical life that you have, this dream, is made up of the experiences that is impregnated on your body and in your mind, consciously, right? Mm -hmm. Your soul memory is another thing. It goes back whatever time that you elected to be in this incarnation for whatever reason. Now, let's show you the division on these things. Since the body is very physical, and we we just got you making a physical being in a few months for spare parts, They said, now we've got the perfect deal. How can we have that work better? Well, if you go to the hospital today and get an encephalogram, what's that? That's the memory of your conscious mind. It's on the CD. Let's download it on this being. Now we got a walking, talking duplicate that has the total memory 
that you have. On a CD, let's download it on this meeting. Now we got a walking, talking duplicate that has the total memory that you have. Either we fall or we rise. Either we accept our own consciousness or we accept artificial intelligence. It's that simple. These people want to transfer their bodies into cyborgs so that they can be immortal. These are the type of people we deal with. See, a lot, the average person running around, you're stuck on police brutality. I don't care about racism at this point. Racism is a relief if that's all I had to deal with, but it's not. I'm dealing with people who can clone me and torture me and then transfer my consciousness back into the clone and do it again. I'm dealing with people who are masters in cybernetics and can create a drone that can kill my own family from their desk. So the problem that we have allowed to evolve because we've been ignoring it, because we've been paying so much, so much attention to BET and entertainment and all kinds of stuff like that, is so scary because we've allowed it to become so big. And we have to deal with this problem because like anybody who knows anything about how militaries run, you know that might is right. And if might is right, somebody can force you to do the wrong thing because they have the might. We are allowing people to gain might, which will in turn allow them to give us bad influences for the rest of our life and probably all of eternity. Because if I can hook your mind up to a computer and assimilate your reality, who's to say I'll ever let you go? Because we just took it off of your own mind. Okay, it's like Blade Runner, the android. Exactly. <laughs> the only thing is that it's like this uh, DVD, re re you know, recorder. Sometimes you have glitches in it, so you have to have them tuned up occasionally or redone them. And so we take them to Camp David or there's a wing at Bethesda Hospital to just tell you. There's, if you go down there and check, you'll find the, the nurses. If they're willing to come forth, they'll tell you they work on those people and they call them the others. I thought it was uh, interesting. <laughs> They're people. Remember, these people can think and act, but they don't sure. have soul. That's also prophesized. Right, Soulless that's beings. true. They're people. Remember, these people can think and act, but they don't sure. have soul. That's also prophesized. Right, Soulless that's beings. true. If I had one in the music. Yeah, I was going to ask, okay, you might have a best friend, you know, generally speaking, but was there a musical best friend? So oh, speak? yeah, yeah uh, you know, me and Gucci were best friends. We still are friends, but I don't, you can't say the best of friends. Probably ain't talk to each other in three, four years. But that, oh, you can't say the best of friends. Probably ain't talk to each other in three, four years. But yeah, but that's, that was one of my best friends as well. And why the absence of dialogue between you two in that span um, of time? Uh, well, he went to, to jail for one point. Then, you know, when he got out, he moved to Miami. So I guess uh, miscommunication, maybe. But no beef between no, you two. No, 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 hell yeah, nah. None of that sort of nah, thing. Nah, even if my bro wanted to beef, I, I ain't beefing bad. That's, that's me, dog, so nah. I don't want to do it. Stay down. I don't want to do it. If I had a chance to live my life over, I probably wouldn't do it. No, I wouldn't do it. Cause I'd have been so well. I know I've been to it. Probably wouldn't even do it. Probably wouldn't do it. If I had a chance to live my life over, I probably wouldn't do it. Uh, Cause I'd have been to it. Real? I probably wouldn't even do it. If I had a chance to live my life over, I probably wouldn't do it.